Uh, the idea of defining the flipped classroom is that there's the need to do practice with math especially um, is probably the most essential part of a student's learning ability. Just doing problems, trying different types of problems, looking at different uh, ways the problems can be presented. And instead of leaving that to be something done outside of the classroom, uh, we want to make that the most important aspect be the time we spend in the room. And so you, you'll notice that uh, the lesson really gets into just doing problems right away and then continuing to just do different problems, looks at different approaches. Uh, with the video that's made beforehand, then it's really important that the video, uh, A, covers any vocabulary that's going to be needed. Uh, it's a great space to convey that type of vocabulary. Something where traditionally would have been taking up time in the lesson, standing there, um, trying to convey vocabulary, giving examples. That can all be done in the video now. They, they can watch that at home, they can write down the vocabulary, they can look it up. Um, and then examples, trying to give uh, some examples of what we're going to be doing in class, putting those kind of ideas out there for them so that when they show up, they've got the vocabulary, they've got the examples, uh, maybe at the more basic level of what we're going to be doing, and then we can just jump right into practice, 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 practice. Hello Math Study students. Today we will be looking at solving quadratics by factoring. We've been working on factoring for a little while now. And over the next two days we'll be doing two lessons where we get to practice this a ton and then also a little bit of added support for those of us that may need a little extra time, plus another chance to maybe look at an alternate method besides factoring if we've mastered the factoring uh, method of solving quadratics. A little bit of differentiation there for those of us that are maybe ready to move on to something new and a little bit of support for those of us that are looking to uh, still master solving by factor. Uh, we can see all the ACT factors that this connects to. Let's warm up by trying a problem here from our most recent mock uh, ACT that we've done. Problem number 20, uh, for all positive integers x, what is the grand common factor of the two numbers 216x and 180x? Something we've been talking about, common factors, factoring, rewriting as the product of two terms. And so, take a second, think if we can uh, find the greatest common factor here. When we did this, only nine of us got this correct, and I'm hoping now that we've done some instruction, we can see some improvement here. And so, go ahead, pause the video here, and join me to go through the solutions. Right. Works uh, six times, so 12, I'm sorry, 36x times 6 makes 216x. And then I just need to check if it goes evenly into 180, and it does. 36x times 5 makes 180x. And so 36x is a common factor, and it is the greatest of the ones listed. Now, right, let's move on to solving quadratics, then, our topic for the next two days. We've been working on factoring here now for a little while, and so we should already be familiar with the process of taking a quadratic and rewriting it as the product of two binomials. We're going to apply now something known as the zero product property. The zero product property states that if the product of two factors is zero, then at least one of the factors must be equal to zero. So for example, if seven times x equals zero, that's a real basic example, x has to be zero. There's no way that we get a product to equal zero without that second factor being zero. Seven times anything else would not equal zero. To kind of build on this then, uh, with a little bit bigger equation, 2z times 3x equals 0. We then have to either have that 3 times x be 0. In that case, it doesn't really matter what 2z is. Anything times 0, and if 3x is 0, is going to equal 0. Or, the other option, it doesn't matter what x is, as long as 2 times z makes 0. The voting system works through this USB here. That's so if you gotta like if you're trying to vote on a TV like on your TV with the remote, point it at here. Excellent. All right, today we are going to continue with solving quadratics by factoring. 
So we're going to learn how to evaluate and critique equations. You can see all of the ACT standards that it connects to once again. And we're going to start actually with a warm-up today that connects to the ACT. And so I've got three problems here that came right from that mock ACT that we did that are all not stuff that we've covered uh, at a different point throughout the course up until now. And so we should see improvement, hopefully, in the number of us that are getting uh, these types of problems correct. Uh, the first one here, which of the following is equivalent simplified expression for 2 times the parentheses 4x plus 7 minus 3 times the parentheses 2x minus 4? And keeping in with the nature of the ACT, I'll give you guys a minute to figure out the problem. Sure, I can turn off, uh, I think I can turn off one of the lights so that we can see a little bit better. Excellent. Ten more seconds. I know that minute per question kind of seems fast, right? But that is that 60 questions in 60 minutes pace that you guys are going to be on in, what now, March is only six months away, I think, if I did my counting there right. We're, we're coming real quick to it. And there are, all right, we got a lot of votes already. The correct answer was C, 2x plus 6. Okay, 58% of us got C, which is not bad. I think when we took this on the mock ACT, it was much lower than 58%, so we're showing improvement. I can go back and compare after class, and I'll be able to know if we've improved or not. But I think that's pretty good. All right, let's go through these three really quick. The first one here, we could use that distributive property. Two times this parentheses would be two times both of those quantities. And 2 times 4x makes 8x, and 2 times 7 would make 14. And then same thing with our second distribution here. We have a negative 3 times 2, which would make negative 6x. And a negative times a negative would make a positive 12. And so after distributing, we get 8x plus 14 minus 6x plus 12. But then we need to simplify. We need to combine our like terms. 8x and a minus 6x combined to make 2x. Right? And that was why maybe some of us chose b instead of c, because they both had that 2x in common. If you had done 14 minus 12, you would have got that 2. right? So they know those mistakes that people make. If you don't uh, adjust for the fact that the negative times the negative makes a positive, right, you would end up with b. Right? They put an answer up there that they know you're going to get if you don't keep your distribution proper. Right. All right, good job. Um, the clickers uh, we're not going to use again, but uh, I'll come around and collect them individually. What we are going to be doing today is kind of splitting up. You're going to either be working on an activity called uh, Find Someone Who, where you're going to have a sheet. You'll do one problem, and then you'll have to find somebody else that has a sheet and exchange it with them and they will do another problem that's not been done yet, and then you find somebody that hasn't done one. Or you're going to be working on Khan Academy uh, with some extra solving quadratics using a unique method called completing the square. And it's all based on how we did on Khan Academy during our last lesson. So let me hand out these sheets to those people that need them, and then we can get started. After that idea of flipping, uh, the other essential aspect of what I would, we, would, we were doing in that lesson and in that classroom is that idea of differentiation, that uh, one-size-fits-all instruction just doesn't make sense. To, to present one lesson with one activity uh, to a whole group of 40 students in a classroom where that would pretend they're all at the same level with the material, and that's just not the case. And goal, uh, which is to learn how to solve equations, critique equations, um, and so... We're just both going to get there through different pathways today, right? It's just people that need more time on one method. Uh, after last class, it looked like we still need more time. As long as we all reach the end goal, which is being able to successfully solve a quadratic here, uh, that's the most important part, right? Not how you got there, not if you were an on Khan Academy person or if you were on the worksheet person. As long as we all have success at the end of class, it will be a, a great class. All right? So I believe... It. Uh, it would be negative 6. Plus 6 would make 0. And over here, it's a little bit trickier. This would have to become 10, right? But let's, let's go through that step. If you subtract that square, it's going to become 0 equals 
negative x squared plus 2x plus 63. Our next step is going to be factoring. Do we know how to factor when this number is a negative 1? Okay, well, I'm Alma Mercado, and right now we're currently learning about completing the squares and factoring it by solving x. So, one of the equations I had was really difficult because like, the first time I didn't really understand it. And then I looked at the video, but it still didn't seem to like get to my head. So, what I did is like, using Khan Academy, I used the hints, and the hints showed me like step by step what I should do. And after I got through three steps, I, one of the things I didn't really understand, but after actually asking for help and, you know, getting so I can understand what I did, it actually got to my head and I was like, oh, I can do it. It works really well on all kinds of levels with the differentiation. And with the flipped classroom model, you get all of it. You get the ability to differentiate the vocabulary, not really in the sense of, like, different activities, but the flipped classroom, the videos, those the, the kids that struggle with taking notes in class, they can pause the videos at home. They can rewind them. They can take notes at their own pace. They don't feel like you're going too fast and leaving them behind. Um, and so it, 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 it works really well on all kinds of levels with those kids and meeting their needs. Um, and then also on the other end, those kids that need that greater challenge can watch the video, uh, probably it's just review for them, it's probably stuff that they already kind of knew, but then in the class time is where you get to them with the differentiation, where I can push them into another method, uh, looking at more types of advanced types of problems where they can solve quadratics or whatever the content is in another way, in a different context, and really push what they're being challenged to do instead of just... So then you're going to do Oh, no, and then after doing that, what... I know that self-directed on Khan Academy can be frustrating, uh, but... We need to make sure that we're bringing our supplies, that earbuds help. The videos are fantastic. Um, plus, obviously, I only gave you that if you were ready for that next level of challenge. Um, hopefully, it went well. Uh, for those of us that were working on the worksheets, also incredibly well done. And most importantly, remember, we're working towards our success criteria, which is just being able to solve a quadratic and then verify those solutions. And so let's go through one here with me. Uh, I know that I've done some in the flipped video as well, so hopefully you watch the video uh, for your notes for today. Uh, I think that was another big definer in people's success today. It seemed like the people that watched the flipped lesson video before class came to class already armed with all kinds of information. Uh, please make sure you're watching those videos. I, I can't reiterate enough how coming to class prepared with those notes really sets you up for success during the lesson. <laughs>